uh, in my previous video, I've explained how we can understand the logarithm scale in certain graphs. And behind this, actually, uh, the ideas of logarithm plays a very important role. Right? So I make use of this coronavirus cases uh, graph, uh, which is actually uh, found from the Financial Times in around March, okay? and which is a very important and very special graph uh, to us and help us to see in a uh, useful way and some exponential change right, in the number of cases of coronavirus. And in this video, I'm going to further explain and how generally an exponential curve can be transformed into a straight line and why is it helpful right, in doing so. And we will use the logarithm and also examine more carefully how the logarithm works. Right? And uh, I will first start with a more simple graph right, to talk about the situation. And let's look at the general case of an exponential graph. And let's see the x here stands, uh, still stands for number of days, okay? which will be, uh, let's say, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Okay? And then uh, for the y value here, we assume this to be the number of coronavirus cases okay, uh, accumulated in time, and which is an exponential change, an exponential increase, okay? So let's say if we start with 100 as the base value, that means in the day zero, when you start recording, there are 100 cases, right? And it grows by factors of 1.5, which is exaggerated, right? I hope that it won't be so high. Uh, but to make it simple, we multiply by 1.5, corresponding to 50% increase, okay? So remember, multiplying by one, by factor 1.5, okay, correspond to one plus, 50%. So uh, it should be a 50% increase each day. And so we raise it to the power x, okay? And that means if you uh, uh, go, go for one more day, then you multiply one more time uh, this factor 1.5. And you will have this number. Of course, uh, uh, ignore, about the, uh, ignore the decimal points. Just look at the whole number part. Then you can imagine the growth will be something like this, okay? Uh, which is very horrible, of course. Okay, in day twelve, then you will grow to uh, about twelve thousand, right? More than twelve thousand cases. Now, if um, of course, if you look at the graph, uh, it will be an exponential graph. Okay, so this this is the graph, and what you see in exponential situation. And um, how about if you plot the logarithm of this y value? That means the logarithm of this total number, right, in the middle. So I will write down log of 100 times 1.5 to the power x. Okay. Okay. And so be careful, this is the log of the number in the middle. And so that means 100, log 100, you have 2. Or on the other hand, that means 10 to the power 2 becomes 100. Okay. Similarly, 10 to the power 2.176, something like this, you will have 150. So all this column, the third column, will be the logarithm of the middle column, the total number. And you can see that uh, these are the purple points representing the logarithm, which is uh, highly distinguished, uh, hardly distinguished, because they are so small in this scale. Okay? And OK, let's hide the green point and just concentrate on the uh, purple points, which are the logarithm. Now you can see that the logarithm of the previous values, okay, now lies on a strict line, and it range from two to uh, something about four, because all these are the exponents. When the middle number, the total number, is expressed as a power of ten, so when it starts from two, right, and uh, exponents of two means one hundred, and when it goes up to three. Right, that is just above 1,000, right? Because this is this correspond to 10 to the power of three, and you can see here three, okay? And uh, sorry, it is a sixth day. On the sixth day, the number grows to 1,000 something, right? This and the index is at that time is just above three, and for another sixth day, uh, then at the twelfth day, the uh, index or the exponent is 4.11, and when the exponent is four, it corresponds to 10 to the power of four, okay? So actually, this number is originally something uh, bigger than 10,000, so which is found in the table here. Now, so this is how it works. And so by concentrating on exponents, uh, you can see more 
clearly how the numbers are growing regularly on the straight line. Although originally, right, you don't forget that originally it is actually an exponential curve, right? But sometimes it is easier for us to read if you understand the meaning of exponents or logarithm. And then uh, particularly it can help us to easily uh, identify any kind of exponential growth if the points are lying on the straight line, in this case of logarithm. And maybe we can look at a little bit more details about the uh, uh, the, the way these uh, purple points are generated. And in fact, we are actually calculating these values, okay, 100 times 1.5 to the power x, right, but the logarithm. So this red line actually shows continuously, okay, these values, if x is taken to be any values, not just the integers, then there will be any points on this red line, okay? Now, it may be very difficult to read this expression, but if you understand the uh, properties of logarithm, then you will find that it is just uh, the same as the logarithm of 100 plus the logarithm of 1.5 to the power x. And in fact, uh, the second, uh, sorry, the power x should be here. Okay, then you can see the correct relation. Um, you can even further simplify it because x, this log 1.5 to the power x is the same as x times log 1.5. Okay, so I just take it away. Okay, so these two expressions are actually the same. But in the second expression, you can see more clearly uh, why the pattern is linear. Because it's just uh, a variable x, which is the day, in our case, in our example here, is the number of days, times a constant log 1.5, plus another constant log 100. And log 100 is also the y-intercept of the strict line at the same time, okay? And don't forget that 1.5 is the factor determining the exponential growth. Right. So it is a, a, a growth based on the factors of 1.5 each day. and But in this graph, it is just the constant log 1.5, which is also the slope of this straight line. And this explains why the number of cases of coronavirus, okay, if they are in the exponential curve, and will be transformed into a straight line if you take the logarithm and plot the logarithm against the x value, which is the number of days. Okay, now let's look at uh, maybe a more general case. You can, if you're interested, you can go to my George Bird file here to also study this more general case. Uh, in this graph, uh, in this uh, page, I put together two graphs in parallel so that you can compare directly. On the left here, uh, you have the uh, original graph and also the number of days and the x-axis and the number of coronavirus cases on the y-axis. I have two points marked here, okay? Representing, uh, and day 10, you have 220 cases. Uh, day 16, you have 500 cases. And But you can take away the curve, and then maybe you don't know whether it is actually an exponential curve, but you can imagine if it is going exponentially, what happened to later days like 20, 25? How far will we go, okay? Uh, and how can you tell? And for example, if you have a point C, okay, in representing a very later case, do you think if it is exponential growth, okay, and then it, in the day 25, the cases will be 1,000 or more? Right? Would it be 1,400, something like this? Now, it's very difficult to tell whether it, this three points is lying on an exponential curve. And, but on the other hand, it may be easier if you turn it into logarithm. So on the right, here is another graph. Uh, while the vertical axis here represent the logarithm of y, okay, y values on this graph, um, and if you take the logarithm, it becomes the values on this graph, okay? So this graph plots the logarithm of the y value of the original graph. And you can see that, as we explained earlier, if ABC is lying on a straight line, then this original graph will be an uh, exponential growth. So let's have a check. And so this point C is about is below exponential, and and actually at the same time, this point C is this C pine is actually lower than the lines joining A and B, okay? And so you can see more clearly how they are matching each other, right? If, whenever you put a point on the same horizontal exponential graph, then this point here 
should be on a straight line, okay, through the point A and B in the logarithm graph. And so you can see the relation which I put down here, okay, corresponding to this relation, y equal to k times c to the power x. Uh, you can even find out k and c, that means the constant here in this uh, straight line graph, because once you plot the logarithm of the values, or right, in this graph, based on the slope, you can find out log c, and based on the y-intercept, you can find out log k. Okay, in that way, you can also find out k and c, and go back to our original graph to find out what should be the curve passing through a and b. Right, so this is shown here, and um, so in this case, the uh, log the y-intercept is 1.75, and the slope is 0 0.06. Okay, correspondingly, the factor is 1.15. Okay, the growth factor is 1.15, and the constant at the beginning is 56. That means around here, uh, 56 case at the beginning. Now you can even do other comparison if you pick up two other points on this graph. Okay, you may wonder how about in another city if you have this situation in day, day 10, you have 600 cases, and then day 15, you have 1,000 cases. Do you think it is growing more rapidly than the uh, original one, or less rapidly? How can you see? In the in the exponential situation, it's not that easy to imagine or estimate, right? But if you put it back into the uh, straight line graph here, or right, in the logarithm case, then you may be able to distinguish it right, more clearly. Now you can see this red line is less not so steep as the green line. So correspondingly. This graph right, has a factor 1.11, which is less than 1.15. Okay, so these two curves seems to be very close to each other, but the straight line graph here tells you a different slope, which is much easier to distinguish. Right, so you can try to check it. For example, when will they be parallel? Okay, that means when will these two factors be the same? So this can also be uh, compared directly, and this is the uh, very important use of the logarithm. In this case, telling you how the original values are behaving exponentially or not. Now, finally, if you want to actually uh, read carefully the original values of y at the, on the same graph, you can do this transformation right, on this axis. Right? Don't forget that if you see 2 on the log scale, that means the original values is 100. If you see 3 on the log scale, the original values is 1000. Okay, And this is also the way. Uh, the original graph that I share with you, okay, and show this. Okay, remember this original graph from Financial Times? They don't show the logarithm directly, right? In fact, they show uh, the original value represented by the logarithm, right? Although the positions of these values on the, of the line is put according uh, to the logarithms of the values, okay? So maybe you can make use of these few graphs to help you to understand more uh, uh, carefully how the logarithms work and why it's useful in many of our cases right, where we are reading scales like this or reading a range of numbers which is very big and difficult to uh, comprehend the ratios among them right, in, in an easy way. So I hope that you can gain something useful from this uh, videos. Okay, bye bye.